In this video, I'd like to talk about the polar decomposition of the deformation gradient f. I'm just going to sort of set it up and talk about it. I'm not going to prove the, uh, the decomposition. I have another video where I go through the proof of what's called the polar decomposition theorem. But here I just want to kind of lay it out and talk a little bit about it. So what the, what the polar decomposition of f tells me is that I can write f in one of two ways. I can write it as the product of a tensor r times a tensor u, or I can write it as the product of a tensor v times that same tensor r that I had in the first way of writing it down. And these tensors r, u, and v have very particular properties. Uh, the tensor r, first of all, is a rotation, so r transpose r is the identity. Uh, also, the determinant of r will be equal to plus 1. The tensors u and v happen to be symmetric and positive definite, and they happen to share the exact same eigenvalues. They have different eigenvectors, but they have the same eigenvalues. Um, they have names also, so u is called the right stretch tensor, and v is called the left stretch tensor. So sometimes we call ru the right polar decomposition, and vr the left polar decomposition. Now, what this decomposition tells me is that I can think about what happens when I have an infinitesimal vector and it's mapped from the undeformed configuration to the deformed configuration, so A goes to FA. And what the decomposition tells me is that there's two ways for me to think about it. I can think about first rotating the vector A and then stretching it with V. Or I can think of first stretching the vector with U and then rotating it with that same rotation R. So there's two ways to think about it. Uh, when you map an infinitesimal line segment from the undeformed to the formed configuration, you can think of, a, think of it as stretch then rotate, or rotate then stretch. So there's two equivalent ways of thinking about it. Now, one thing that's important to think about is the fact that in many of the expressions, in fact all the expressions that are concerned themselves with stretch and strain or even shear strain, they all involve the right Cauchy green deformation tensor. And the right Cauchy green deformation tensor is defined as F transpose F. So if I plug in here for F, let's say I'll, I can write this as RU transpose RU, which is equal to U transpose R transpose RU. And R transpose R is the identity since R is a rotation, so I end up with U transpose U, and U is symmetric, so U transposes U. So this gives me U, U, which I just simply write as sh shorthand, I write as U squared. Okay, so if you look at this now, that tells you that really everything that we care about has to do with the stretching tensor and has nothing to do with the rotation. And in particular, what that says is that so R plays no role in line area or volume stretch and strain, nor does it play a role in shear strain. Really, all the info that we care about is contained in C or equivalently in U, the right stretch tensor.